I know Jesus, and he loves you. I know Jesus, he can forgive you. I know Jesus, and the grace that I've received is for you, and the peace that I've received is for you. And I believe that what he extends to me, he extends to you. Come on, clap your hands and help us this morning.
first message. I've enjoyed walking through the entire Bible, and now we have arrived in, in uh, this letter of Paul to Timothy. And I love First and Second Timothy. As you take a look at, at First Timothy and Second Timothy, uh, you're going to feel this personal outpouring from a spiritual father to a spiritual son. Uh, Timothy is identified as a son of the faith, is a young man that Paul has had the opportunity to, to sort of watch grow up in the faith, to see, to see his calling develop and his fulfillment of that calling. When Paul writes this particular letter, it's a time when Timothy certainly could use encouragement. And so I, I, I want to ask you to enter into 1 Timothy and, and encourage you to read the entire letter this week, 1 Timothy. But keep that in the back of your mind as you read that Paul is writing to Timothy. Timothy has a, a particular assignment, a difficult assignment. And you can see that as Timothy is, is set up to, uh, to really oversee this church at Ephesus, there are things that he faces, challenges that he faces. Certainly there are challenges everywhere. Uh, but you can take note of some of those challenges as you read through the letter. Uh, there, obviously, there were people who uh, were teaching things that weren't true. There was a need for mature and godly leadership. And Paul sets out a description of what that looks like. He tells us uh, quite specifically what mature leaders look like in his letters to Timothy and also to Titus. And so we know that there, there must have been a great need to continue to raise up leaders, mature leaders, godly leaders, spiritual leaders. And so that's a part of Timothy's challenge. But I'm going to boil it down this morning to say that I, in reading 1 Timothy, I sense that, that Timothy needs encouragement. And Paul was, was a man that was certainly uniquely fit to provide that encouragement. And I want to ask you to take a look with me in chapter 1. In a moment, we'll look at verses 12 through 17. And so find chapter 1, verse 12, and you can highlight that passage. But when we, when we come to this point, one thing that I want to say that I learned from Paul in this particular passage is, is something that I believe is transferable and, and, and a practical application for all of us today. And that is the fact that my story can make a difference. You may not feel the same calling as the Apostle Paul to be an apostle. You may not feel the same type of calling or, or operate with the same kind of ministry details that, that we read about in, in the Apostle Paul's life. However, I believe that everyone, first of all, is called 
to be a witness. I believe that every believer is called to be a witness, is called to share, to witness, to testify. Both in life and in word, I believe we're all called to be a witness. And in doing so, I also believe that I would even specify that we're all called to encourage others. I believe that God wants all of us and each of us to be an encourager. And so, how do we do that? Well, I, I want you to, to begin today by thinking very positively about this. My story can make a difference. My story can make a difference. There are many places in the New Testament where Paul tells his story. There are many different ways that he shares it. This is one of those. And in walking through 1 Timothy, the first chapter, in verses 12 through 17, there are some lessons we can learn about how Paul shared his story that teach us some things about sharing our own stories. Look at what he has to say. He begins, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man. But I obtained, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long-suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 It's a great it's a great testimony. It's a great witness. And for me, when I read through this, it is Paul telling his story, writing in letter form. This story is written to be communicated to, Tif to Timothy, who needs encouragement. He needs to be lifted up a little bit. And Paul chooses, and this is the first part of the letter, so it's a little bit of his greeting. It's a little bit of setting the stage for the letter. And as Paul's letter arrives at Timothy's hands and in his ears and received in his heart, it's like, this is the opening. I want to encourage you, Timothy, and I want to talk through my story. Here's some things that I'd like for us to learn from this. If you look through Paul's story, I believe there are four specific things that we can learn that will help us to share our story. What about you? Have you ever felt maybe inadequate to share your story? Maybe you take to heart and, and you say, I know I'm called to be a witness. I know I'm called to encourage, but how? What do I say? When do I say it? Will I say it correctly? Will I, will I blow this opportunity that God's given me? Well, these are some practical encouragements about how to share your story. Let's take a look. Break it down a little bit with me. The first thing that I notice is, is that, that, that Paul understood his current life in light of what Christ Jesus had provided. If we're going to share our story, if we're going to encourage others, I think this is important. Listen to what Paul said. He said, Jesus has enabled me. In other words, Paul, he introduces his story with a certain amount of humility. That enabled. You remember the words of Jesus when he said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's a passage that we associate with the day of Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples. Same word here that Paul uses, same root word there to say that it is because of Christ in me that I am enabled to be who I am. You see, when we, sit, when we, when we share our story and we set out to encourage others, I think humility matters. I think, I think it matters because if we're just going to share our story to say, hey, look at me, Look at me. It's not going to be the encouragement that God intends. And Paul says he understood his current life in light of what Christ Jesus had provided. 
And he said, Jesus has enabled me. Jesus has counted me faithful. I didn't, I didn't set myself up. I didn't, I didn't set myself up to be the apostle, to be the encourager, to speak. Jesus enabled me, and Jesus counted me faithful. And then he says, and Jesus has put me into the ministry. I am where I am today because of Jesus. If we're going to be good at speaking our story, we have to learn to be able to say what Jesus has provided. We have to be willing to point to Jesus first in our story. Second, second practical help I would draw from this is that Paul understood his past with a proper perspective. It's not just that he understood his past. It's not just that he could tell his story and tell about where he had been and tell about what he had done and tell about the mistakes he had made. He understood his past, but with a proper perspective. Look, as you look through that, he says, I was a blasphemer. In other words, I said things about Jesus that weren't true. That's what he means when he talks about his blasphemy. He, he says, I, I, I know that I said things that weren't true. He says, I was a persecutor. I persecuted those who loved Jesus, who knew Jesus, who talked about Jesus, who served Jesus. I persecuted them. I was insolent. One translation of that is violently arrogance. That's descriptive, isn't it? I was proud. I was arrogance. I was insolent. Paul describes himself that way. He says, I was ignorant. I did not believe. Paul understood his past in proper perspective. He, he measured his past against Jesus and his present. Now, let me just say something here because when I think about telling our stories, when I think about encouraging others through what we've endured, what we've experienced, the mistakes we've made, what we've said and done. Maybe like Paul, there are a lot of things in our past that were against Christ, that were contrary to Christ. But it's important for us to gain a proper perspective. Here are a couple of problems I see when it comes to our past. First of all, we can be a prisoner to our past. We can be a prisoner to our past. I'm talking about in order to share your story about Christ, in order to share your story in a way that encourages others, we have to have a proper perspective on our past. One way we can fail is we can be a prisoner to our past. We can still be caught. We can still be trapped. We can still be living there. Paul doesn't, he doesn't share his story in a way that says, I'm still there. He says, I was a blasphemer. I was arrogant. I was so proud. I was insolent. I was a persecutor. I, was, I didn't believe. And I persecuted those who did. He wasn't trapped in his past. He wasn't living in the past. He was presenting it as a part of his story of who Jesus is. Don't be a prisoner to your past. A proper perspective of our past recognizes that we have been set free, that old things are passed away and all things become new. Don't be a prisoner. The other mistake we make is don't glory in it. Now, when Paul talks about his past, and he does share details about his past, but notice how quickly Paul points to Jesus Christ. See, the glory belongs to Jesus. Even when he speaks of being a chief of all sinners, even when he elevates his sin, it is to elevate the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he points to Jesus. He's constantly pointing to Jesus. When we talk about our past, let's not glory in it. Let's not be a prisoner in it. Let's glorify God. Use your past wisely to glorify God and also to minister to others. Because I believe the experiences we've gone through, even our sins in the past, God wants to use those experiences to minister to others. But that can only happen if through those we're pointing to Christ and not to ourselves. It can only happen if we're pointing to Christ and we're recognizing that he is the one who has set us free. And we're not a prisoner to the past. Secondly, have a proper perspective on our past. Third thing, let's look at, at another practical help we find here. Paul knew how to describe the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
it's obvious. When you read through, this is a short story. Paul's describing a lot of his life. He's describing years and experiences and, and past and present. He, and it's just a few verses in this letter. However, it's clear when you read through this that Paul knew how to describe the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to how he says it. He says, the Lord's grace was exceedingly abundant. He says, faith and love are, are found in Christ Jesus. He says, Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners. Look at all that Paul packs into just a few verses. It's because he knew how to talk about Jesus. He, he knew how to describe what Jesus does. He knew how to talk about the ministry of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the grace of Jesus. He knew how to communicate to Timothy in this particular case, who Jesus is and what he does. He says, I obtained mercy. He knew, he knew how to talk about what Jesus could do. Do you know? Do you know how to talk about who Jesus is and what he does? Start with your story. If you want to know how to be an encourager, if you want to know how to be an encourager, you need to develop your ability to talk about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. There are ways that Jesus has ministered his grace in my life that is, in one sense, the same as the way he's done it for you, and in another sense, it is totally unique to my journey. There are things that I can speak about the grace of Jesus Christ in my life then I, I need to develop my ability to talk about it. I need to develop how I can communicate how he has ministered to me so that I can tell my story. Paul was able to do that. Invest your life in knowing him. Invest your life in loving Jesus. Invest your life in drawing near to him. Invest your life in experiencing his ministry in your life. And then talk about it. And then tell others about it. Invest all of yourself so that, you, how do you know Jesus? Well, you spend time with him. How do you know his ministry? Well, you, you meditate on it. You embrace it. You receive it. You celebrate it. And you talk about it. That's, that's the, the, the very center of our lives that we're talking about today. Jesus be the center. And, and Paul knew how to do that. He knew how to do that. And the more we share Jesus, the more effectively we will get sharing him. Talk about him. Tell about him. Live close to him. Surround yourself with people who know him. Surround yourself with people who know him. And don't be afraid to surround yourself with people who know him with with different types of experiences than you have. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for people who have experienced Jesus in different ways. I shared before when Nick and I uh, had the opportunity to go to Cambodia, we met Moses from Vietnam, who's a great apostle in, the, in Vietnam. And I, what, what stands out in my mind about him more than anything else is they said he has his bag packed in his apartment. He's been arrested so many times for preaching the gospel that he has a little travel bag by the door so that when they come get him, he just picks up the bag and heads to jail. Multiple times. Noble, I'm glad I met him. I'm glad I met him. I heard a story about the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's different. I don't have a bag packed. It's a different world from where I live. Same Jesus. Same Jesus. Same Jesus. But there are things that he has done in your life that he hasn't done in my life. Learn him. Know him. Get close to him. Learn to talk about him. Learn to share about that ministry. Now the last thing. If you look at what Paul did. Paul... Paul understood how his testimony gave him a purpose in life. There are times, I think, I think every human being wrestles with purpose. I believe all of us at one time or another in different ways 
at different seasons in our lives. We wrestle in different ways. But I, I think inside of every one of us is a wrestling with my purpose, with why am I here and my identity in Christ and how I serve out that identity. Paul understood that his story, his testimony gave him a purpose. Listen, he says... I receive this mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ. I receive this ministry from the Lord Jesus Christ so that my life could be a pattern. Did you hear that? He says that up there when you're reading through that passage in, in, in 1 Timothy. He says that, that Christ might show all along suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe. So that my life, my testimony, my story, Paul said, is a pattern. So what Paul understood is, is that my testimony gives me a purpose. I have received mercy from God. I have received, I've been on the receiving end of God's long suffering, his patience with me, his love for me. His grace toward me. I have been on the receiving end of that. Why? Well, there's a purpose for that. He says, so that that could be a pattern. God, give us those opportunities where we can look people in the eye and encourage them and say, what he has done for me, he can do for you. Bottom line, when we're sharing our story, is, is we need to be able to get to the point to say, what, what the New Testament says it this way, that God is no respecter of persons. That, that what God, the forgiveness that I've experienced in my life, he can do that. Because there, there are people that come along in our lives all the time, and, and deep within them, if they know that we have peace with God. Here's a part of the question, and here's where the need for encouragement comes in. Is they look and they say, you have peace with God. I could never have that. They may not say that out loud. You, you may be thinking that here this morning. You may be thinking, oh, that's great, Pastor Paul. You have peace with God and you know Jesus. I could never have that. Paul understood. And I think if anything, that's one reason he, he would say, and I was chief among sinners. So that he would look them in the eye and say, don't, don't say he can't do that for me. And Paul would say, you know what, I, I persecuted people who love Jesus. Don't tell me he can't forgive you. The, the writer of Acts, Luke, said that when, when Stephen was stoned, that here was this, this man named Saul. They, they, they laid their coats down, and he was consenting unto Stephen's death. And I see him over there as this precious godly man full of the spirit is being stoned to death a brutal and agonizing death and Saul is standing over there saying he got what he deserved I'm glad they stoned him I'm glad they killed him matter of fact we need to kill more people like Stephen he's consenting and he's aggressively and he got letters giving him authority to go out and persecute people who believed in Jesus and who followed him Paul gets to this point in his writing in this letter that he sends off to Tim Timothy. <laughs> Keep trying to rename him here. Yeah, like Saul, Paul, Timothy, Tiffany, you know. <laughs> Pray for me. Yeah, yeah. Leah, God bless you, Tiffany. Yes. You're a son in the faith. God bless you. <laughs> Timothy. He said, uh, he said this. My life is a pattern for others. In this fact, God was long-suffering toward me. He extended his mercy toward me. My testimony is to glorify God. My story is to give honor to him. My story is to communicate that what he has done for me, he can do for you.